Well, praise the Lord. One more time. We're thankful, grateful, privileged tonight. Once again, another Tuesday night at Center of Eagles Institute class. We want to welcome all of you, those of you that are that are staff here in the room, as well as those of you that are listening to us live streaming. I was thankful. We're grateful to God tonight for every single one of you as we're preparing our hearts, ready one more time. Uh, as we're believing, we're believing tonight. Um, Pastor Alvin Garrett, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, going to be with us also again on tonight. Uh, we appreciate Apostle Belinda Helms being with us on last week. Uh, we weren't in town and um, was having some difficulties with, with, with the streaming uh, on last week. But so we're here tonight. Thank God for all of you that are gathered tonight. We're getting ready. We're, uh, we're getting ready to approach the throne. Going before the heavens tonight, I want to invite all of you to come go with us tonight. We believe that's something on Papa's heart. And so, and we're, we're going to prepare our hearts. We're going to get ready. We're going to get our minds ready. And we're going to get positioned tonight uh, to be able to uh, go before the throne. I'm going to ask you to come go with us as we welcome all of you that are listening to us live streaming. Whatever social media outlet which you are enjoying, uh, uh, in joining us on this program tonight, we want to welcome you tonight. So let's give the Lord a praise offering. We thank God for every one of you and all of you that are that are within the room and those of you that came in the north, the east, the south, and the west. And whatever you had to come across to be here, we're just glad you won. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, let's do it. Father, once again, we're thankful, we're grateful, we're blessed. As always, when we get the opportunity to be able to come, come collectively, collaborate together before the throne with these, your people. And so, fathers, we recognize and acknowledge Holy Spirit's leadership, his teacher. Uh, we, we recognize his instructions because he's our leader, he's our teacher, he's our counselor, he's our guide, he's our instructor, he's our standby, he's our go between. And so, tonight, as we're honoring him, Holy Spirit, we're looking to you. Uh, we seek your leadership tonight in the name of your son. We're asking you that tonight you will speak through these lips of clay. And I'm agreeing in advance and also with Pastor, Pastor Garrett tonight as we surrender, as we're bowing before the throne and we're looking to the heavens tonight. And Father, we're asking as we're preparing hearts, readying our minds and surrendering before the throne. Yes, by the spirit of living God through the thought of your word, speak to this people, declare thou that which is in your heart, that which is on your mind. We're asking you to unlock the Holy Writ tonight. And we're asking you to let us down in the midst of your counsel tonight amongst these that have gathered tonight. And so we trust you, we believe you for all the things that are in your heart, things that are on your mind, things that you purpose and mandate for such a time as this. And so I'm asking you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as we're agreeing, believing together with every single one of these tonight, and that the Spirit of God is going to lead us and direct us. And Holy Spirit, we trust you. We're looking to you. You are my leader tonight. And so we surrender. We ask you to take the things of Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and disclose them, reveal them, sh show them unto us tonight. Teach us concerning his Lordship. We ask you in faith, in the awesome, in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we pray. And so as we're thankful to God tonight, thankful for all of you, and honoring the Holy Spirit for every single one of you tonight. And um, we're blessing heaven. Well, listen, uh, tonight we're, we're waiting, st still anticipating. Uh, Pastor Gabe, we don't know uh, what is, what's going on with him. Uh, and tonight in being able to get uh, get in pocket, get in place. Uh, but there are some things that he, he's going to share with us tonight. Um, and, and, you know, we had been talking about when he was on with us previously, we were talking about the resurrection. And I know that you guys, were, were, there were things that were there that we believe that so many of us as a church, the body of Christ, that we're not really been benefited from. And that's so much that God is, is by virtue of that reality. And uh, like I said, this is not uh, necessarily a passage that we probably, I know we're going to talk about it. We'll probably hit these things and touch these bases, but that's not the track that he'll set for the night. But what I'm going to do while we're, we're, we're anticipating that he being with us real, uh, real soon and shortly, uh, I'm going to ask you to come go with me just for a moment. And as they're getting getting ready and getting set up to be able to to read these scriptures and and, um, and get the mic tonight, um, we're going to. I'm going to ask you to come go with us while we're waiting. Uh, while we, I want to say wait, but we're anticipating uh, Pastor Garrett to be be joining us shortly. So listen, while we're waiting, we'll, we'll just uh, right now, and uh, we'll, we'll get as you can when you're sitting down at the restaurant, and you know, and 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 when you know you first come in there. So listen, uh, you man, can we get your drinks and? What do you want to drink? And then after they ask you to drink, uh, would you like to have an appetizer? And so what we'll do, we'll just do a little appetizer while we're we're getting ready for uh, the track that we believe that, uh, that I know that the man of God has uh, been sharing out of and things that we talked about a week before last, before I was out of town. So let's do this. This is this will be just an appetizer uh, previous to the entree, the meal. And so if you don't mind, we're going to go right here and just for a moment. Uh, out of Ephesians. Ephesians, uh, we're going to look there uh, just briefly. 
Uh, you remember the Apostle Paul was talking um, to the church um, there, and he was he was he was trying to reveal something in terms of our relationship and things that really uh, that we really need to be able to comprehend and really be able to grasp that the Lord is revealing, the Lord is sharing, the Lord is communicating. And so I'm going to ask you uh, to come go with us there. And uh, as we're, as we're, like I said, as we're um, in in route to what we believe we need to be. So if you don't mind, in Ephesians, are we there? In that first chapter of the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul uh, talking to the church at Ephesus. And yeah, and I know many of you know, some of you probably, you're probably one of your favorite books to go to in the Bible uh, because uh, it is so rich. There's so much that's incarcated um, there and so much passion and so much um, drive, so much desire uh, that's over there. And so as we think about, you know, even as you're dealing with Ephesus, and, and you talked about, I mean, there were some major assaults, some major challenges, which get, will allow us, um, uh, even during the second, when we talk about Ephesus, and there's so much that goes on historically that took place in Ephesus. And I won't get into all the, the history of, of, of some of the things that, that's taking place right there. But um, we know that that was one of the major themes, right, of this letter. And that had to do with the church, the body of Christ. And, you know, we read, and I can give you those verses out of Ephesians, that's, uh, the first chapter, verse 22, 23, second chapter, verse 15, verse 16, uh, which had to do with a lot about the body of Christ. And a lot was exposed and revealed concerning us functioning as a body, unified where the power was, uh, how we were extended. And it revealed the victory uh, that was wrought even through Christ and how that uh, God gave gifts as men. And we begin to understand now that the victory that was wrought and how that victory was achieved uh, because it was symbolic of how that generals in battle and you had warriors back in those days, how they fought battles, that one of the ways that they fought battles, uh, uh, what they did, because David even kind of resembled that when he took down Goliath and the Bible said he cut his, when he cut his head off, you know, after he killed them and the Bible said he, this this giant of a man, this man of a man fell forward into the ground. And after he fell forward into the ground, because the Bible says that through the slingshot that David used, uh, in which he began to use one of those smooth stones, and the Bible said that that stone sunk into his forehead. It tells you by the force and the authority that was behind that that slingshot when that when that stone was released. Man, it wasn't just a, it was not just a kid that had a skill set. Man, this was a kid that had a relationship with God. And in his relationship with God and the authenticity of that relationship that he had with God, that the power of God got on. And that's one of the things that we, 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 we as we talk about the church and in that, that once David was, once the Goliath was slain, the Bible said that David took his sword and began to take off the head. And what, 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 general, what generals would do, and particular leaders in battle or warriors would do in battle, when they would begin to, 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 to have a victory and they begin to, from that victory, any victory that you have, because the, one, one thing that we, we're probably going to talk a little bit about tonight is that in that, you know, we use it kind of as our theme. We talk about in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, chapter and verse 77, I'm sorry, 57. And then we talk about 2 Corinthians 2nd chapter, verse 14. And we talk about now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph, uh, who always gives us the victory. And we talk about when, when we talk about victory, we talk about a triumph as it relates to the body of Christ that we're talking about. We always say that a, a triumph is different than, than the victory, but the triumph signifies what was captured in victory, what was captured in the battle. And as a result of it, because we, as believers, we had to make sure we purpose intended that you and I would not have any empty victories. All we got, you know, sometimes people have what they call moral victories. And in other words, uh, because they weren't expected to do that and they did better than what they anticipated. But that's not who we are. And we think about the Bible said we were more than conquerors through him that loved us. Remember, we're not just conquerors. So we think about what Jesus did, and we think about what happened and how that we got to be in the position, the seat that we're in as the body of Christ and even what God gave to the body. And I'm telling you something, what was captured when he says in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and I said, I, I guess before I go over there, I, I did want to, to, well, let's, let's do that. I'll do that. I'm going to do that just for a moment. And now, if you don't mind, and, and, and I will share this, I'm going to come back to that and maybe, just, maybe the Lord is doing this and by giving us time to to get 
where we need to be. So I'm going to do this in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, just a moment. And now, if you don't mind, in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, we're there. And if you take a look just for a moment, because what we said, now in verse, let's take a look for a moment. Now notice it says, and, and, and I'm telling you right here, because as he's relating in, in Ephesus, he's talking about the oneness of the Lord here in this passage. And that when and when 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 the fourth verse begins in that fourth chapter of Ephesians, and how it begins that there is one body. Remember, he said there's one body in that fourth verse, and he says, and there's one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. And then he states, one hope of your calling. He said, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and we're seeing this central cord, this cord uh, where we're talking about oneness. Right. Because we tell you that oneness is the product. Oneness is where we're all trying to go. That's what we're trying to be able to realize and recognize. And that was a thing that in battle, in in warfare, oneness being united, finding that that base, that base of functionality, that base of, uh, of operation and, and finding that harmony, that symphony, that find that accord, finding that place is the, one of the most powerful that's why we always say that agreement is the place of power and we think about it moving forward and it's going to be something tremendous a, a tremendous in this as he talks about it here because the, the, that's one of the things that you and i as a church we're trying to do and understand that i know, I know one of the things that we talked about uh with pastor garrett is that moving from one um one level uh, moving from one level glory to another level of glory going to another level of glory when we're talking about that, we remember what, what, he, what he said to Haggai. He said, the Bible said the, the glory of this latter house is going to be greater than that of the former. And that's one of the things we have been talking about, too, relative to the house of God, the body of Christ. There are things that need to be understood concerning the church, the power, the force, the authority that this body should be walking in and operating in. Why? Because we're not divided. Man, you take anything that's one, you can't divide one. You can't divide one can't be divided that's the very nature of god and when the bible talks about god talks about he's immutable unchangeable because he can't be divided and he's immutable you can't he he, he can't alter who he is in his nature who is in his essence remember when the bible talks about the the sow uh, it's wallowing in its mouth because who he is in his nature whatever it is you are at the core whatever you are at your the centrality of your being you Listen, that's who you are. I don't care how we dress up, what we add on, what we take on, what we add to us, what we do, what we want to seek out, what we want to find, what we want to gather, what we like, all those things. When we get challenged, when, when the hardships come, when the shaking takes place, like what we started to be uh, see took place through the pandemic, when we saw through the pandemic, and so in a way, as we think about it, I don't, I don't know. We, we got a, one, another one of these issues uh, tonight. I don't, man, I'm telling you, it is crazy. I don't, I don't know what's going on. You may have to do it again. Send them another one and give them another opportunity. Um, so with that, let's do this. We understand that Pastor Garrett is having, there is some issues with with, with the link again, and uh, we're having to redo it. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, but, but let's do this. As, as we think about it, because one of the things we're talking about, notice, and I'm going back to the fourth verse, he says, there's one body, one spirit, even as ye are called. And notice how that, notice how there is one body. Notice how there is one spirit. The Bible said, it is as ye are called in one hope, right? One hope of your calling. Now, as we think about it, as how, how that we are called in, in one hope, hope of our calling and 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 and, and, uh, and i'm going to go on down if you want to look at it and we'll come back to this moment and you notice in the fifth verse one lord one faith one baptism and notice what he says one god and father of all who is above all and through all and what and in you all now here's the thing we want to emphasize just looking at the oneness and seeing the culmination of what the end game is. As we're looking at to determine what the end game is and where we're going, where everything is headed and what we're moving into, we're moving into a place where we cannot be moved. The Bible said the, the whole purpose, the intent of, you remember, remember we talked about the trifecta of the hour that we're living in and out of Hebrews 12, the Bible said that God, everything that can be shaken, 
is going to be shaken. And the whole the end game, the intent is to get us to a place to where those things that cannot be shaken, that those things may remain. So the hour is about absolutes. What the hour, what the time, what the hour, what we're living in, what the day is about, and what the things that are taking place, these things are exposed. And that's what light does. Remember? Light exposes, light reveals, right? Light will manifest. It will manifest destiny, manifest purpose, because the Bible says that light makes manifest. It reveals, it exposes, it brings out things that are hidden. It's designed, light will expose, bring everything to the forefront, to the reality of what God intended. And so with that, that's why as we're moving, as we're progressing, we're moving toward, I mean, a personification of light in, in, in dimensions and spheres like we've never seen light before. And I'm talking about, just think about it. In the initial phase, when God wanted, when God, when he had that, when there were issues in the creation, when there was issues there, we go back to the book of Bereshi in Genesis, the first chapter, verse chapter, verse three, and the Bible said, God said, I'm sorry, second verse, and the Bible said, and the earth was without form and void, right? The earth was without form or order. So we can see where things, are, when there is a breach, when there is a breakdown, when things are not where they need to be in, as it relates to purpose and destiny, when things are not destiny, destined like God intended, that we recognize the cure, the antidote. The Bible said when God said, he said the earth was without form and void, and he said darkness covered the face of the deep. And we saw that things had to be separated out, brought into the distinct God-ordained destiny and purpose. And so things, purpose could be distinguished and God had to separate things out. And you remember when he separated things out, what he say? He had to separate from the water, the waters that below, from the waters that were above. And he set waters, the waters that supposed to set above the heavens. You know, we, we call that rain. And we call the rains that are above the heavens. And thinking about the, the waters that are above us that don't do the same thing as the things that are below us. And in order for us, those things to be distinguished, because see, before they were, these things were merged. We can see they had to be separated because they were merged. So the, the distinction of their purpose was not revealed until we see God has to address it. Then we start to seeing the distinguishing roles of these things. And remember after God began to speak and he goes on down, said he separated from the waters from above, from the waters below. And then the Bible said that then he began to, as a matter of fact, I want, I want to look at this real quick. Because what I'm emphasizing is what God is doing and what's taking place and why it's going to be so crucial and so critical in our time. Because I don't want us as a church, as a body, I don't want us to lose out on what God is purposing, what God is planning uh, in this hour. I don't want us to miss it with all the things that are taking place with the wars, the rumors of wars. And right now what's taking place in the Ukraine, Russia's assault of the Ukraine. And what's taking place right there? What's taking place in our economy right now? What's taking place through inflation? They said we got inflation in our nation. It's taking place in America right now like it has not been in, in four, 40 years years and when we when we take place now the inflation that's taking place and what we're taking place the price of things look at the price of gas and right now in particular on trucks diesel fuel almost six dollars a gallon and somewhere some places even over that but here just in in the state of alabama the price of, of diesel fuel 400 500 i mean i was just thinking about it was down in florida in florida it's five dollars and 83 cent a gallon for diesel fuel and if you can just think about think about uh, trucks, think about vehicles that are going to have to bring our products, going to bring our foods, going to bring uh, many of our wares. And most of America, trucks are carrying a lot. We know trains carry, carry a lot. There are a lot of different avenues, airplanes. There's a lot of things, ships. There's a different, different vessels and vehicles that are used to get supplies, to get products, to get materials to us. But all of them need fuel. There's not a single one of those vehicles that don't need fuel. And by virtue of, of, of how the fuel is being impacted and the price is going up, it means that those those products that you and I are going to need to be able to be sustained are going up. And I don't know if you noticed, and I don't know if you, you, you've heard lately, but also there's been an attack and assault on, they tell us, 12 of our food plants. And I'm talking about potatoes. Man, the, the plant blew up. I think, I think it was in Iowa. I know in California. It tells us 12 different places where food plants have been have, have been set on fire, either on fire, burned up, burned, or blown up, or some explosion, something took place. But 12 of them. How does 12 different units in different units, different, and I'm talking about food plants. And those things, you, you know, 
if a food plant is is is, is being destroyed, you already automatically know how that's going to affect our economy, going to affect its prices, going to affect what they're going to charge. And so um, we're trying to get people positioned to understand what's taking place in our culture and our society, so we'll understand what is going to be needed to be able to combat it. Remember what God told us when it comes to warfare? Remember when He said in Second Corinthians ten, chapter verse four, and the Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're what? They are mighty through God. So the strong, the thing that the enemy uses to try to undermine or overthrow or to put us at a disadvantage, to try to bring stress and anxiety. Because you know when people start seeing things happen, folks start to panic and they're rushing, trying to get, get as much food as they can, get much distance as they can because they're afraid they're not going to have enough. Well, as a believer, as the church, as the body of Christ, and this is one thing the reason we're going over the Ephesians just for a moment. Right? Because this is just an appetizer. Remember what we told you? This is an appetizer. And we think about it. And one of the reasons we told you what the end game was is, is to come to one, come to where you can't be divided. Because we told you unity is, and when he's talking about it here, because I didn't go back up when he said in that third verse, uh, that same fourth chapter, when he says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the what? The bond of peace, right? But then when you go, if I, if I took you on down to that, that, ele- that, uh, that uh, 12 verse, I'm sorry, 13 verse, at that same fourth chapter, in that 13 verse, and the Bible says, till we all come. So what we all coming? What we what we all got to come? It doesn't make any difference who you are, what part of what part of the body you are, what what part of the body you embrace, what you realize, what you acknowledge, what you reverence, what you respect, what you regard. The end game, the end game is, and remember the reason I'm talking about the end game right now because of the way God does business. God does not build houses or products. He doesn't build from the outside, outside in. He builds from the inside out. And what's so awesome about that as a church is the body. The kind of light we're going to have to have from God in these times, because if God builds from the inside out and you got people out here trying to understand the external things that are going on out here and trying to recognize their situation from what was happening, what's taking place. They're looking at their bills. They're looking at their, uh, their, uh, their relationships. They're looking at their families. They're looking at their warfare. They're looking at their fight. They're looking at their challenges. They're looking at their hardship. They're looking at the trials. They're looking at their tests. They're looking at the way things are going and they're looking at everything from the external. They see what's taking place. And I'm pointing these things out, but I'm pointing out the external happen. Like I said, with the 12 food plants that were just set on fire, blew up, bomb. And I mean, I think I, I forgot the, the length of time, but it's been a very short period of time that 12 food plants, man, that ain't no coincidence. That's not a coincidence. That ain't just something that happened. And I'm telling you right now, because we already were warned. We already had a word from the Lord already trying to get people positioned that and we told people that one of the things that was going to be a, was going to be greater than nucle- the nuclear war was going to be greater than the things we think through the bombings, through the atomic bombs or through nuclear warfare or psychological. All those things are going to take place. But one of the things they t- was telling us that in the natural uh, that war, war was going to take place other, other than what we were looking at nuclear was going to be a war about food. We told them we were sharing that because we were that word came down to us. Uh, some, some, I mean, I'm thinking about a year and a half, almost a year, two years, almost two years a year, about a year and a half ago. We got that word. We're trying to let, share people based on uh, what God had been being able to bless us, some of the relationships that we got. And I appreciate uh, some of the, some of the relationship that we got. And these are people that are kind of in some real strategic places. And, and God has privileged us to be able to be there to hear some of the things uh, that God is saying that we want about it. You know, one of the things I also share, and we're trying to tell, prepare, prepare people and rid of people too concerning the pandemic. I know it with COVID nineteen, and I, I, even with some of the some of the variants, some of the mutations. We've also been trying to warn people, tell people, and I know some of the prophets have been sharing these things, have been sharing, communicating. This is some of the things that some of the people, the prophets that I know, and relationships that I got. One of the things that was telling us that the, even concerning COVID-19, they saw COVID again. I sh- we shared this with you when, when, when I, I shared this with you before that Pastor Roberts was sharing with us about COVID-19 when he saw COVID was like this woman who had on these black pants, high heels, long black hair, couldn't see her face. And we shared with them then because God was letting us know that that thing was still was still fashionable. It was still strutting. It was still walking, still presenting itself. And as it was strutting itself, uh, like as if it was on some runway, still demonstrating. And that was when we got, I think it was around uh, last year, around Memorial Day. Memorial Day. We got that spike after that. And then all these, all these cases started to hit again. And that's when that word came from. We began to pray around that word. And God began to share with us what was taking place. All right, that word has come up again. This time concerning the virus, that it was wearing a bikini. 
It doesn't didn't have on the black pants, didn't have on the high heels, didn't have the long hair, like I said, we was making a fashion statement. This time it was wearing a bikini. And we know before concerning COVID as relates to it, remember what, what we were told concerning it, what we were told concerning it before was that you know, if you get out in the heat and you you try to get get heat, get a lot of sun, and it was well, this time around, uh, this this one is dressed for the heat. This virus, this mutation, this Listen, this mutation of it, this particular uh, strand of it is, is going to be already conditioned, already prepared against the heat. So now getting out in the heat won't be something you'll be able to use against it. So as a result, we've really been trying to get people to listen. You got to pray around this thing. And if right now you got compromised situation. Something that's a challenge in your health somewhere, somewhere you find it difficult. Or there's a challenge somewhere. I need you. I'm telling you now. If you know you got compromised, if you know you got challenges in your health, if you know your immune system is compromised, you need to be working on that now. You need to be trying to build up now. You need to listen. You need to be inundating in this word, getting in the face of God, praying that God can do something on the inside for you. Because remember, we told you how God builds. God is not building from the outside in. Are you hearing me? The Bible said Moses was faithful in all his house. As faithful as Moses was, he was only a servant. In the house, are you hearing me? Moses was a servant in the house, and the Bible said, "The servant knoweth not what his master does." There's a lot that in servitude, and even as a servant, there's a lot of things you're not going to know at that place, and that's one reason we're headed toward. And one of the things that the third things are taking us toward, bringing us into, and that is bringing us into sonship. All right, now, and that's one reason that oneness. That one is we're talking about, and that's what he was talking about. But, but listen, I'm emphasizing that because one of the things that has to be understood, one of the things that we have to grasp, and one of the things that has to be comprehended, and one thing that has to be realized, did we give the other link? What do we do? All right, now. Uh, but anyway, let's do this. I don't like that. I don't. Well, listen. Let, let me do this because now that I'm, um, I'm what what I was giving way to some things that I even had specific. We're not going to be able to do that, and so now I'm gonna, I'm, I'm trying to do something different. But let's do this. What I want to say as we're, we're trying to get people prepared because we're telling folks they got compromised situations because we already know what has happened already. For all those people that was ill prepared, not ready. Not ready. COVID came blowing through there. And it was kind of like the old Adder huffing and puffing, trying to blow houses down. All right? And remember what he told us in Luke, the sixth chapter. And this is one thing we're trying to get people prepared against. Because what people are going to need in this hour, in these times, to be able to combat and what, 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 what would have preserved people and would have been brought people to the place where they need to be. And that is, remember what David said? David said, though I walk through the valley of Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what happens? I fear no, there's no evil that can befall me. No evil that can befall me that I'm a fear, I'm fear of. And why is that? And he said, though I walk through the shadow of the what? Of the fear of death. The ultimate fear. The ultimate fear on the planet. Ultimate fear on the planet as it relates to the earth, as it relates to humanity. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I want, I fear no evil. And the reason being, because he says, who thou art with me, it tells you, it gives you an idea of the relationship that David had with God as a shepherd. Because there's a literal place in Israel called the shadow of death. That when, he, when he's taking those sheep through and those mountains on each side, and by virtue, when he casts the shadow there, you can't really see mountain lions you can't really see wolves you can't really see how there's something and that's why he's explaining when it came to goliath how that when the lion came out the bear he was able at that particular place when the lion came out he was able to do what he needed to do but he told you how that happened he didn't fear any assaults because his he was predicated the relationship this is what we're trying to tell people concerning warfare concerning spiritual warfare, concerning the fight concerning war and one of the main issues in warfare the issue is being close so you can imagine if we talk about this oneness for a moment, like I said, this is not something I was intended to talk talk about tonight. And I was really just doing his appetizer. Now I'm going to try to see if I can uh, try to make an, make an adjustment right here. But listen, let's do this. 
I'm gonna see if I can make an adjustment because I won't be able to, to do, like I said, what I, what I thought I was gonna be able to do. But here's, here's, here's what I'll say to you. God help my soul tonight. Please pray for me tonight because like I said, I thought we were gonna be doing something different and I'm not able to do that. And I'm, I went down Sunday that I was gonna only temporarily talk about and um, trying to give weight to something else that I thought we were gonna be talking about and that's not happening tonight. So I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do my best to try to, 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 to adjust out right here and I'm gonna get you to come go with me as we're trying to get people prepared because we're trying to get people ready. And because one of the things we've been talking to the church and the body of Christ about, and one of the things that I was telling you with Moses, Moses, when I use the term that Moses was a servant, and, and I'm going to one of them to find the passage from him. When the Bible says, remember, a servant knows not what his master does, but who is it that knows? But Jesus, I call you friends because of the, the, more in, the most more intimate relationship that Jesus had with him. So you can think about sonship. And I, I want to share something with you. I want to share something with you. When Jesus talked about, when Jesus talked about in John 14, he, when, when uh, Philip was asking the question, because Jesus is talking about going back. And he's talking about, I'm going to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you, that you can be, right? He said, I'm going to prepare a place. Now, think about it for a moment. If you and I don't understand, and it's what I'm using Ephesians, the fourth chapter, to talk about oneness, because the place that Jesus was talking about preparing where you and I can be where he is, and the only way you and I can be where he is, when he's there, the Bible said, listen, he said, that you can be where I am. And, you know, that is that in order for that to happen, we had to become one with him. You know, when he prayed in John 17, he was praying to father. He said, father, that they may be one as we are one. I in them. You, he said, you and me, I in, I in them. Listen, as you think about the oneness and you think about that unifying, that thinking about that all in all, and that's something the Lord act literally spoke to me. And I'm telling you, it's going to be something that as a church, as a body, we got to enter into because who he's made us to be and allowing, think about that, the father and what the, because remember, the only way to know who the father is, the Bible says nobody knows who the father is but the son. No one knows who the son is but the father and he to whom he wills to reveal him. So it, it's something that God has to, it is own and his own counsel, his own predetermined counsel that God wants to reveal the son to. Because remember he said in Matthew eleven twenty five, 25, he said in Matthew eleven twenty five, 25, I thank thee, Father, that have hidden these things. There are things that are hidden to certain people that God don't allow them in. Remember he said it is the glory of God to do what? To conceal the matter. The thing that's so awesome about God, and here's the thing that you and I are going to be really building a case around in these days and these times moving forward. For the thing that we're up against, like I said, when I talked about the, the new variant, when I talked about uh, the COVID that's coming and the things that we're getting ready. And I know people right now starting to relax. We lay back. You know, uh, we don't have a mask near. We ain't thinking about masks. We ain't thinking about sanitation. We're not thinking about what goes on. And what, some of you not thinking about thinking about shots or boosters or any of that. That ain't even the conversation. Don't even go and almost even talk about it on the news. You almost got to find a special program to hear about that now. Because pre people are really pushing because they believe now that we're out, oh, out from the, the – we're out from the pandemic. The pandemic is pretty much is the foregone conclusion. We got it. But here's the issue. My brothers and sisters, we're telling you, and, and, and I remember one of the other prophets was sharing with me. And they said, well, listen, what I saw of, the, of COVID, they saw another cell. But you remember the first cell was red. It's all those little, little tentacles, tentacles on the on it. It was round. And I mean, it had these tentacles on it. It looked like some kind of brain cell or something uh, on COVID. And they showed us, we'll show that. You see that everywhere. Well, this time they said instead of it being red, this particular cell, this time the variant uh, uh, and, 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 and the mutant was going to be blue. And, and we're sharing with people that it's going it's to be different. And so you, giving you some things you can go look at, look it up, research, talk about it, because you know you're talking about this BA point, BA2, and these different variants. They already talking about point, they get, oh, we got a BA, a point BA5, point five now. And the thing that they're talking about, that's new strands of, it, of, this, of this thing. Only reason I'm emphasizing this because I don't want people to get this false sense of security and they haven't secured the house. Remember, because God is not building from the outside. There are things people are trying to buy, people rushing to get this, rushing to get that, trying to have enough this and have enough that. Even the water, like, listen, if the house full of water, if you got a well underneath the house, it ain't going to do you much good if spiritually you ain't nowhere with God. Because what you got to understand what the end game is. What's the end game? What is it about? We're headed somewhere. 
the plan is here somewhere. That's why, listen, that's why you need the Pentecost. Why was the Pentecost necessary? Because the thing that had been foretold, forecast, prognosticated, that thing that had been declared and decreed that told you, Joel prophesied, in the last days, says God. What is God going to have to do in the last days? If God does not pour out his spirit in the last days, if God does not release the power of God, the spirit of God in the last days, and you need the spirit because the spirit is what we need because he's going to be the forecaster of the things that are going to be taking place is as a church, we can't afford to hear about what things are becoming on the planet at the last minute. Why? Because one of the reasons is that going to be things that are coming on the planet that the Bible says men's hearts are going to fail them. That's why you're seeing so many people. At the, listen, have you ever seen, I mean, since the initial phase when you heard about cancer? You know, it's been a long time. You know, it seemed like because technology, the advancement we've been making, and people pretty, pretty doing surgeries and pretty, doing pretty good with cancer. But now, all of a sudden, there's been a resurgence of cancer and people being taken out of here. Now, with people needing kidneys, dialysis. Have you ever seen in your life so many people with dialysis? I mean, they got babies five years old, six years old, 13 years old on dialysis. Got diabetes. Oh, you hear me? They got little babies, little kids, because what's happening? Their health is breaking down. The body's breaking out. There are things that are happening, stress factors. You've never seen in your life so many people so stressed out. And listen, I could take you almost so many different categories. Listen, even in, in, even in, a, in, 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 the, in, in, in the gay community, in the gay community, homosexual, do you know that suicide are, is at an all-time high? Do you know when it comes to marriages? Do you know divorces at, at an all-time high? Do you know people are committing suicide? Listen, do you know police... Police, do you know police suicide among police are at an all time high? Do you know there's so many different categories where things are on I me? Mean, there's a groundswell. Things are, listen, they have escalated. They're at an apex and zenith. Things are at the very utopia of big, people's health are breaking down. Listen, because of where people are in relationship to God. Are you hearing me? Listen, there's a lot of things happening to the planet because the atmosphere. See, remember, I want you to understand something. It's not just about a person being born again and just being saved. People, we're trying to get people saved. We want people lo loving Jesus. And we get, we've had a church full of people that was born again, right? They said they love Jesus. But that experience is not affecting the culture. Now, we use as an example that many of you got issues with your hip or with your knee, or, or your leg, some kind of something going on with your foot or leg or something. If the weather gets damp, if it gets raining, Oh, your leg. Oh, my God. My hip hurt. It must, ma'am. And then, like I say, my arthritis is acting up. And, and, and you know, because the, call, the, the impact of, of, of what's taking place in the weather is finding its place as it relates to our, the natural, natural being in, in our personage here. Listen, if we were living just like the natural can impact certain things when you compromise, you can see now, if, listen, if you ain't got that compromise, that some people don't, don't know the rain change. They don't even know it's just raining. But the people who got compromises, knees, got problems, they, and they ache, pain. Man, it's, it's raining, my arthritis acting up because of the weather, this, that, and the other. But there are people who don't know nothing about that because they don't have those compromises. And what I'm trying to say to you is, and here's, here's one of the point of the emphasis. The point of the emphasis is, why do you need the church to be salt? Why do they need to be the light? Why does church just do church, go to church? You know, your, your faith is private. Prayer is private. What you believe is private. You know, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be out here in the public domain, influencing, impacting, affecting people with your faith. Listen, you want to believe that about God, it's okay. You go believe that about God. You just, you know, in secret, private, you do it. Listen, you don't know the intent. Private, whatever you do in private with God. If you establish anything in relation with God, get what God going to do. Whatever you establish, have you considered my servant Job? What they had in private, God gonna make it a public domain. It's going to the public realm. That's the nature of fellowship and communion. Listen, this is what I'm trying to tell you. You commune with God, you fellowship with God, baby. The public gonna know it. If you got a secret place, you got a closet you're in, you're spending some time with God, you're developing a secret history with Him, baby. That secret is coming to the open because light ain't designed to be hid. If we're the light of the world, you listen, the light ain't designed to be. Baby, that's why you need a lighthouse out there to help those ships find their way back to shore.
Are you hearing me? God had need a church not walking around here just so I, we, me and my family can go to church and, 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 and hear the preacher. No, baby, we're going to that church. We're sitting up there with our family. We're trying to get these kids in the house of God because we're trying to get them to discover their destiny. We're trying to get them to find out what summoned him, summoned them to the planet. See, you didn't just show up because somebody was just full of lust, even though that was the vehicle. Even though the vehicle that got you here, somebody was looking across the room at somebody and, and, and listen, saw that blush in, the, in that cheek and said, um, yeah, I like her, I like him, and decided they want to get together. But listen, let me tell you something. For us to get in the planet, nobody, you don't just show up. You don't just show up in the planet. The Bible says that when birth, things are birth, it's a time. Because it, that has to, there's too many things involved for you to get here. And the Bible tells you that everything is born passed through death to get here. Listen, to be born. When Ecclesiastes said there's a time to be born, baby, you don't just show up. Somebody prepared, made an arrangement for you to be able to get here. There are certain things in the chromosome. There's certain things that will say, you know, you survived 499 million cells, cells to get here. One cell out of 500 million that had to connect with that, it had to connect that, 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 that sperm that came that had to hit, that made the connect, I mean, in order for you to get here. You had to survive. It's 500 million. I'm telling you, that goes on in that body for when a man and woman, husband, let me, let me clarify that, a husband and wife, are you hearing me? For them to get together, what, what it takes and how that's designed. Because you got some people out there crying, screaming, praying. I mean, out of, like Isaiah 54. I mean, because they're barren. They've been crying out to God for a child. So you tell me just laying down? This laying down going to give you a child? I got folk that I know been screaming, crying, trying for years, on years. I had one young lady living down there in Macon, on the other side of Macon, Georgia, that, that couldn't have a baby. They called us and said, listen, we need you to pray. And one of, one of, our, one of, one of the elders, a uh, uh, precious, precious, precious uh, family member, uh, one, one of the friends of the family, I should say, and was saying, listen, my daughter has been really crying out for uh, crying that they want, they want a baby. She's uh, her husband. Husband was a military guy. He was a he was a, he was a navy, navy officer, navy soldier, uh, personnel, and, and 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 he was in the navy. And they was wanting a baby, and they was trying real hard to get you know all the things that people teach you to do, and all the little things they were trying and concepts and ideas to try to do that, and they couldn't have one. It didn't happen. And you got people now still trying and want to and wish they had, and it didn't happen. So tell me why not? Because if, if if it's just people laying down. If it's just, you just land out, that should happen any given time. Any, no, it don't work like that. You got to read this. Listen, you got to read this book, baby, to know what God's plan. You got to understand, understand God's government, understand what God's after and what the end game is. God's after something. And when the time is everything shake out, we're going to find that out. You're going to find that, baby, that's a method to the madness. You can't just show up in this planet. You don't get to just come here. And listen, when you get here, that means destiny was calling. There's something, uh, there's something that God has purpose intended for your life, and it summons you, and maybe you had to come. You had to respond. Now, there are many people that come that never realize and never enter in, but then that's the love of God. When the Bible says, when you read John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever does what? Believe it in him. They should not perish, but they, they still do. But it doesn't change. Even, listen, when I tell people, you know what's higher than you being saved? You know what's higher than you... You know, the end game, the end game was higher than you being saved is the ability to have a choice because people don't understand when the Bible said that all we were on fear, we're in fear of death all of our lifetime. We were, we were under the fear of dying. That's one reason we talked about the resurrection so much. That's why we talked so about it so powerfully because of the fact that there was so much infused within that resurrection that so many people don't understand. That's what I thought we were going to be talking about tonight. And listen, there's so much infused within the power and the force and the authority of that in the resurrection that, listen, that, that brought us forth because, listen, you, and I tell people when it comes to sinners, do you know you can't just walk out of sin? You can't just leave? You can't, well, you know, I'm going you can't just tell them that, well, devil, I'm gone. I'm out. I'm, I'm quitting. I'm through. It's a wrap. I'm tired. Listen, the only way that, listen, you know how you get to get tired of what you're born to do? Because what you're born to do is natural for you to do it. And it, and it's, you, and it feel good doing it. The only time you start to get disrupted, you start feeling uncomfortable doing the thing you were born to do. I'm talking about in sin. That was what we're born in sin, shaving iniquity. Anytime you're starting to deviate, start dis display, start not liking it, it starts bothering you. You start being bothered. And a lot of people, they walk over that. God's dealing with them. 
Listen, Abel, one way, because that the Bible tells us in Colossians, the first chapter, that we were in a kingdom, and that kingdom was called darkness. And Ephesians 2 said, we walked once according to the course of this world and according to the prince of the power of the air. And we recognize that is a, there was a headship authority and system in place that had us walking under a system. We're under the guise of a system that we had no choice about. So when you're born in something, you have, that means that you want, you're not the parent. You didn't, you know, you didn't send in, you didn't send in, uh, you didn't write out something and put it in the suggestion box. Hey, listen, what about me? And listen, I want to be a girl. I want to come in. And you got people trying to make that after the fact. You're too late for that. You're too late. And we get it that people do it. We understand what takes place. But guess what? I wish I had time. When we talk about the resurrection, what do you think going to happen when the resurrection take place for folk that have done something God didn't do? I wish I had time to talk about what you think going to happen when that body, listen, what you think going to happen when it's time to raise, raise folk up and they stand up, when you got to stand in the court, when you got to stand before the judgment seat, what's going to happen when people, the white throne judgment, what do you think going to happen when people standing before those judgments? What happens you think when people, stand, I should say, the white throne judgment? Well, I'm talking about that one where people are answering for, you know, not, not, not like believers. We're in, a, we're in a whole different position than sinners. You can hit me up in here. So, but there are people that's going to have to be able to stand. Are you hearing me before? That's, that's going to be judgments. That's going to be made. What we, we, we got to stand before the Bible tells us clearly. But listen, I don't know how I even got off on that. Let's go back. We're going back to something because we're in a time, we're in an hour, we're in a day that people need to grasp, grasp the reality of believers. And baby, this is no private thing. You going to church, your, saint, your, your sons, your daughters, the reason that you fought to get them there and taking the risk that after you drugged them to church, listen, made them go when they're when they under your rule, under your authority. And listen, you're mandating that they're requiring them to go. And then some people say, well, you know, they can go if they don't want to go. Listen, it's one thing if they're of age to make those decisions, but like, like at my house. They know that at my house, baby, if you ain't going, listen, you ain't got to go to church. When they're of age, of certain grown folk, they ain't got to go to church, but you certainly getting up out of here. You know you're getting up out of here. Sunday morning or whatever the service is. Listen, you listen, you're getting up out of here. You, they got they know that's academic. And listen, I don't care about folk getting mad about, I don't care about them feeling some kind of way because I made them go. The Bible tells you that what the, when it comes to children, the Bible tells you, you got to be a parent. When it comes to children, he said, you got to train. Let me tell you something. You got to train a child. He got to be bent. The Bible said the best time to get a child, you got to bend the sap. You got to bend it. That's resistance. It ain't got, listen, but you want to get it as young as you can get it. As young as you can get that business out, you got to do it while it's young. Am I right about it? God tells you to do it while it's young. That ain't none of my idea. Ain't my idea that my son go to church. Ain't my idea that my daughters go to church. What my, that, that my idea that man, mama, you could tell me me just in one that these guys had to go to church. It wasn't my idea. That was God's idea. It was God's plan. And I was following God's plan. And I wasn't afraid to follow God's plan. I'm not afraid to implement what God's telling me to implement. Scared what they going to do. Baby, listen, I don't already set the track. I already set the bar. I already made a determination. Listen, baby, what's in the root going to be in the fruit. I know what God's going to do. And I'm determined because, listen, J Jesus showed us that. Baby, let me tell you, he showed us what's going to take place. We, we, we understand how it's going to shake out. We're not shrinking back. And my brother said, this is the hour of the time that we're living in right now. We ain't backing up. We ain't backing down. Because we got to understand, God can put us in a strategic place and the level of authority and dominion that God has given unto us. We will set, listen, light was designed not to be taking no second seat and being a second class citizen. Light was designed to rule. God said, I set the, listen, when he said, I set the, the sun, the moon, the stars, and I set them in the heavens. He said, I set the light. He said, do what? I said the sun, moon, and star to rule the day. No, nah, maybe no, no, not rule the day to reign, to have rada, dominion, bless them, be fruitful, multiply, fill this earth. Are you hearing me up in here? My brother said we shouldn't be backing up trying to make space for folk that don't, re don't respect, don't honor God. The Psalm 24 said the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and all they who dwell therein. Baby, we're trying to populate the planet. We're trying to influence, impact, affect the planet with as many of our kind as we can do it. But we want to make sure it's the right kind because God told me a long time ago. He told me a long time ago, brother, when I was, I remember I had a people that I thought was trained, trying to kind of get to a certain position. And then God said, listen, I don't like this. I said, what, what? I don't like this right here. I said, why you don't like this? Because they don't look like me. He said, they don't look like me. And God didn't want me reproducing that that doesn't look like Because the Holy Spirit going to only join like can with like can. Are you hearing me? I know, I know. It's, it's, we can't be no mixed breeds up in here. We can't be hybrid. 
I know you got a hybrid calling. I know you, I get about the hybrid calling and I get that. But in terms of who God intended, there can't be no confusion about who he is. There can't be no confusion. The Bible says when you come to God, you got to believe that he is. Listen, you're looking for rewards. You're looking for benefit and blessing. You got to know how it comes. First, John 5, 14, this is the confidence you have. How are you going to have confidence? That you know if you ask anything how, according to his will. That's why we ask people all the time, which one do you want? Do you want an answer to prayer or do you want prayer the answer? And people think about it and they still come back. I can tell them and say, well, I want answers to prayer. I, I said, hold it. Let me, let me bag that. Let me bag that train up. Which one do you want? Do you want answers to prayer or do you want prayer the answer? And people sit there. Mm, mm. And they got to think about that. Because you know what they're going to say? I really want what? My prayers answered. And they don't, they don't really, they don't understand. Listen, God don't play with that. Listen, this is a fixed fight. Man, we ain't in here hoping we win. Baby, we were giving the victory before we got started. Listen, the fight been fixed. It's already changed. The devil fell down in the first round. Hello? He didn't make it past the first round. Are you hearing me? I mean, the devil, listen, he didn't make the first round. I mean, listen, when, it, when, when the bell rings, it was over. Are you hearing me? It was already over. You know that fight was over before it got started. Because the, 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 there were aspects of God's nature, his being that the devil didn't know. See, you listen, it's a dangerous, it's dangerous to, to fight against a opponent. Think about this. People are taught, they're trained. If you was on a, on a team, if you are, a, 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 if you're an athlete, you're a competitor, you're competing. You know you're going to compete with somebody. You got to know, you got to know, you got to know the competitor. You got to know what you got. And the Bible told us about two kings. One had 20,000. The other one had 10. And he's coming up against that king. He realized that he had so many more than what we had. What he did. The Bible said, you can't beat him, join him. He joined the other king because he knew he couldn't match his energy, couldn't match his strength. See, you got to you got to be able to know. You got to be able to know what did David do when he stand up against Goliath? He came up to Goliath and said, "Listen, you came out. Of, this is what he told David, that you come out against me with a what? With a sword and shield." And he knew what he had as a resource. He knew what was getting ready to happen with what he thought he had. The man was living in false security. He thought he had this. He was looking at David, looking at he was young, looking at young. And he said he'd been a warrior from his youth up to now. Here you are coming out here, youthful and young and ready to look like you're about 14 to 17 years old. And y'all sent this out here against me? He had already disdained. He didn't know the competition. He hadn't done his homework. Baby, you don't go into no fight, no battle, ignorant to the opposition. The Bible says, I will not have you ignorant, brethren. Be not ignorant of Satan's devices. And then he tells us, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. You got to understand. And as we got to understand going in, you gotta, when you're up against the adversary, you got to be able to understand what you're up against, what you're fighting. You got to know what you're dealing with. That's what the whole nature of warfare. That's why the purpose of strategy. Why are you strategizing? Because you got to understand, you got to give the enemy or adversary credit for being who they are. Remember what David said before he went in because he knew the adversary? He said, you, he didn't call him a giant. He said, you uncircumcised. He already was defining him to himself. Listen, I'm telling you, you uncircumcised, which tells you if I'm calling you uncircumcised, you know who I am. I've got a covenant with God. Listen, I already, listen, the flesh has been cut. The skin and the foreskin has been cut away. My relationship with God, I'm in covenant with God. I know what God's capable of doing. I know what he's getting ready to do with me and you, with me against you. I know what's going to happen to you. Why is this? Because I know your position. I understand exactly how you're going to fail. And I'm going to tell you before you come, before it's over, let me tell you how you're going to go. Let me tell you how this is going down. I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you down. I'm going to cut your head off. I'm going to take your body and feed your body to the foul there. I'm going to feed, I'm going to take care of God's creation with the body and your head. I'm taking it down. And I'm taking it down on Chancellor and, and because this is what I gather in spoil. And that's what I was telling you earlier about it. Now, here's what I'm going to what well, I'm trying to emphasize to this church is about it. My brothers and sisters, we have backed up two years, pandemic, been on a corner. My brothers and sisters, we should be fired up. We should have been, I mean, we're talking about been savoring to get to, to get to the house of God, preparing ourselves to get ready 
baby, because what's about to be released and what's about to be unsheathed, what's about to be turned loose on the planet, what we're getting ready to impact and affect, God, this, this, this society, this culture, baby, they ain't seen nothing yet. Nothing that's, listen, I'm trying to get back where I was. All right, I've given you a verse. i give you a verse, look up for me. What we got? Did, did I give did I give John 15 15 look that up? What was that? What was it? Yes. And right, now here's, here's what we're doing. Because while I was emphasizing, because I'm talking about how God builds, and I'm saying that because I'm talking to a church, because I'm telling you, God said the glory of this latter house is going to be greater than the former. And I was letting allowing you to be able to know there's a reason that we were called salt, there's a reason that we were called light, light of the world, salt of the earth, that because we are here to influence it, we're here to affect it, we're here to impact it. We're not just here to make sure everybody be okay. No, no, no. We're not here just to make sure to be okay. We're here. The Bible says, I want, listen, pray the Lord of the harvest. And what he said, when you, he's saying the kind of prayers you're going to be praying concerning the Lord, the kind of prayers you're going to be praying is going to cause God not just to try to woo people to come in. The Bible said, thrust them in. When he said that he was sent, go look up, the, look up the word in the Greek. It means God's going to be thrusting people into the into the in this, this end time i pray the lord that he would send forth divinely appointed holy believing persevering labors into this harvest the kind of labors he wants divinely appointed holy believing persevering laborers people that ain't no quit in them they like the woman is at the just unjust judge door ain't no quit in that woman and the judge rig like he recognized that listen this woman ain't finna stop so i'm get i gotta go and get up can you imagine you and I as a church, how convicted, how devoted, how dedicated, how committed we are to who we know we, we are. And we know what, what, what our members, what our family what our family needs, uh, what the body needs, what the congregants needs. Those that we are called to work alongside, when we know, understand what they need from God. When we recognize that the level of passion and drive in me, how unstoppable you become when you recognize what you need. We told you that when you blind Bartimaeus, when he was crying out, and they told him blind Bartimaeus in Luke the 19th chapter, they tried to get him to be quiet. You remember? And the Bible says, well, I'm sorry. In Luke 19, those are the people who are praising God, blessing God. They were trying to get the people to hush. And, not to pray. and Jesus said, if these hold their peace. You don't understand. If these hold their peace. This is what I want you to understand. Even if you decide not to do it, what you got to understand, if you don't do it, if you don't become bold, if you don't challenge this planet, guess what? If you don't do it, what he told Esther. Esther, this is what you need to understand. Baby girl, you ain't got to go. You ain't got to do this. But know this. God said, you may deny me, but guess what? I ain't going to happen. I ain't denying myself. So God said, I'm in every generation, I'm going to be God. Ain't nothing going to stop God from being God, even if you choose not to do it. If you choose not to function, if you choose not to obey, baby, you're not going to stop him. He's not going to be stopped. Are you hearing me up in here? So I'm talking to folks that didn't compromise because somebody discouraged you. Somebody poo-pooed on, on, on your, well, you started something, you did something, and they didn't want to come, and they wouldn't support it, and they backed up on you. I don't care if they backed up. I don't care if they didn't want to do it with you. I don't care if they believed in you, not believed in you. I don't care if they didn't give you their endorsement. They didn't grease your head. They didn't put no oil on you, and they didn't breathe on you, pray on you, declare. And they didn't push you, encourage you. Baby, I remember Alvin Garrett Jr., Pastor Garrett's son, song of songs, said, if, listen, if nobody else goes with me, I go on by myself. If they don't go with me, I'm going on by myself. Are you hearing me up in here? We, but the issue is not to be stopped. That's why God said, listen, if you're going to build a tower, listen, count the cost. What you count the cost for? Not so you can get started and the enemy send you back to the house. No, you count the cost because I intend to finish. And listen, and that's how you got to start. That's the love passion. Baby, you got like, like I told like that woman knocking at the end just just. She was knocking like ain't no quit here. That woman was knocking like she, listen, she was knocking like you had already, listen. Any project we've been trying to tell people, listen, you, anything you're going to start, you got to start it like you intend to finish. You got to let the devil know because here's the issue. I tell people anything that you pray about, you cannot afford to pray about stuff that you don't really need. If you don't really need, you're wasting your time. If you ain't got to really have it, don't pray about it. Listen, the things you pray about need to be stuff you got to have. You need to have a revelation. She knows the Bible says in Mark 11, 23. What things soever you do what? See, things you're praying about me, stuff you desire. You got to be, see, desire is passion. You know, listen, let me show you how strong that word is. We ain't time to go there, but let's do this. In 1 Corinthians 14, chapter, verse 1 says, Desire spiritual gifts. 
What it, you know how strong that word is? It means to lust after them. Lust. That's how strong the desire has to be when it comes to spiritual things, when it comes to God. Baby, you got to want things like you. Listen, you ain't letting go of this no time soon. You know, things that when it comes to God, things that when it comes to the things of God, you need to have drive, passion. You need to be hungry because we tell people all the time, the only thing you're going to be filled with is what you're hungry for. If you ain't hungry for it, you're not going to have it. Because that's why I told Matthew, the fifth, fifth chapter, he's talking about the Beatitudes. Blessed are they that do what? Hunger and thirst at the righteousness. But what? But they shall be filled. Now, let's try to get here. I'm showing you something because I'm talking about this house. I'm talking about this body. I'm talking about the body of Christ, the church, the living God. My brothers and sisters, I'm telling you how we relate to each other. Got to change. We got to stop dissing people, looking down on folks, talking bad about folks, thinking because you seemingly, you have, a, you have an argument about fashion that somebody else don't have. You may be have class. You may be a class. You may, your, your parents were classy. They were cool. And then they had a way of, they had a manner about themselves. And sometimes people do have, they, they have a, a real elevated man. Some people, uh, because they, the, the, the parents were savants, they, they, they were sages, they were, they were wise, they had wisdom, they had insight, they were sharp, they were smart, and some people are. And from that, they knew how to instruct the family. And some people are seven generations deep, some five generations deep. Some people, listen, they come in, they make sure that these things go down through the generations. They're teaching each generation what the family crest is, who the family is, what the family does. Now, a lot of us, we don't think generationally, but you know God is a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We know that God is a generational God. God, listen, he's going to make sure in every generation that he's revealed to the generations as God. God intends to affect or impact every generation that exists in the planet. God ain't letting not one generation escape with them not having an opportunity to know who God is. God wants to influence the generation. And therefore, that's why I said we're not giving up on these young people. I don't care what folks saying about them walking away from church. They're coming back. I'm telling you, listen, I, but listen, I'm telling you something. And listen, we got, listen, they can tell you, we got examples of that. I told people, I mean, some of what God doing with some of these youth, some of these young people, and how they're flowing in the spirit, how they're sensitive to God, how they can prophesy, minister to God. See, I mean, some of them, listen, some of them, I mean, they can see things better than I can see it. I mean, some of these kids and what God's doing through them and the sensitivity they got. I mean, I mean, when they weren't doing anything, I mean, they just walked up in the door, just glad to be here. But now being up in here, thing that God revealed, thing that God shows them. And baby, I give them, I give them the floor. I let them do what God's showing them to do. Now listen, because I want, I'd rather kids, if they're going to stumble, fall, make mistakes, let them make mistakes in an environment that's comfortable, in an environment where people love on you. They ain't going to kill you out. They ain't going to destroy you. And talk about, well, you must go to so-and-so church. No, baby, you at home. And listen, if you're going to fall, stumble, fall, I want you to fall down, stumble at home where you're in an environment that allows you to grow, allow you to make mistakes without killing you out. I hear him up in here. So that's what's got to happen these days. So listen, as we're talking about it, we're talking about, I told you, in, sorry, I, I want to look at this for a moment. If you don't mind, she's going to get John 15 in just a moment. Somebody going to get for us uh, uh, Hebrews the third chapter because I'm talking about this church. Remember what he said? It's got to happen in this body. Ephesians, we started out right here in this fourth chapter. Like I said, I had no intention of talking about this in I know y'all got to pray for me because I, I, yeah, I, I just got brought over in a land and trying to sing Zion songs. <laughs> the Bible says you can't sing Zion songs in a strange land. And maybe I'm trying to sing. So somebody got to hear, pray, 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 pray. So anyway, in this fourth chapter, Ephesians, know what he says, right? And so as we're talking about it, because we're telling you over here as it relates to it, the Bible said that's, that's one body. Remember, one spirit. Even as there's what? One call in the hope of your calling. Bible said one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all, who is what? Is above all. He is the Father who? Uh, now, now we, we have to do a clarifier on something. Because remember, this is the church he's talking about. God ain't Father everybody. Because the Father something means that you had to give birth to it. And the Lord didn't birth everything. Bible says, now listen. If we say, if I say we were born in sin, that means you're born of God. If you're born in sin. Now, that's why Jesus had to die for sin. Jesus came to take away the sins of the world. So either God didn't, don't father sinners. He don't father sinners. But he did create the creation. So humanity was created by God. He didn't father them, but he did create them. That's why he, that's why in the beginning, God, the word God there is not Yahweh, right? That word there is Elohim. 
the plural nature of God in his create in his creative ability in creating. That's why he said when he, he created man and he said call their name. Because male and female was there, was in God. And God created that. That's the plural nature of God. Because of, if, listen, there's nothing that exists that did not exist by him. All right. Now, listen, I want to get off on that. Let's do this. Now, here's what I was emphasizing. The Bible says one faith, one baptism, right? One God, Father of all, who is above all, and what? Through all. And where is he? In you all. This is the reality. Let me show you the end game. Let me show you why God gave men gifts. Let me show you why you are passionate and driven and want the gifts that God gives you and why you want to function, why you want to operate in them. You want to operate in every ability, every grace, every gift that God gave you. Because in your gift set, in your ability, is the way you operate and function in authority. It's the way you function in power. Notice what he says. Remember what he's after? I want you to see this. And he tells you about one, bring you one, 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 one. But here's where he's trying to go with all that. That's why he says endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. Now think about it. If I tell you to keep something and I tell you to keep unity, now if I'm telling you to keep it, that means you ain't producing it. If I'm telling you to preserve it, to hold on to it, it exists previous to you. Now, in order for me to enter into it, to be able to be benefited and be blessed through it, and you to work for me, I have to regard it. And we're in a time and an hour that we're living in right now because we recognize that unity, well, the strength of anything is its unity, right? And unity is the same quality, the condition of being the same in kind, right? And it is unity, we told you once before, as it relates to unity, diversity. Diversity embraced is unity achieved, right? Unity achieved, remember I told you, right? Is power released. Power release is results of lives changed. You want to change people? This is what we're talking about. But we're coming back and how we're going to affect the planet because we're going to understand how this thing works. We're going to get that unless we can embrace each other endeavor to understand that we got to embrace the differences. People are different than us. Different influence. John was different than Peter. John leaned on Jesus' breast. I mean, was, was, was called a disciple of love. But Peter, Peter was a portal. He was a portal to the gate. He had the key to the kingdom. He let the first Gentiles into the gate. He had the keys of the kingdom. John had a revelation of God in a whole totally different reality. Peter in a different way. They all had different revelations of who God was. Luke talked about the, the level of revelation insight that he had concerning God. He said, I, having most, he said, having from the beginning the most perfect, excellent understanding. He had, he had, he had perfect understanding. God unlocked as a doctor because now he, the book became science for him. He, listen, it became an art. And what he communicated from that place in God, but all different of them from different, different. And there's a lot of other things we can say about it. I won't do that right now. Let's do this. I want to go back because what I'm trying to show you as it relates to us. Notice it says in six verse, one God, one father of all who is above all and what and through all and what and in you all. Seven verse said, but what unto every one of us? What is it given? Given grace. Now notice everyone, but unto every one of us is given one grace. According one. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now, every one of us has been given grace. And that grace is in measure to what Christ has gifted us with. Now, notice. Well, we have eight. Wherefore he won. Wherefore he saith. When he won. When he ascended up on high. He led captivity captive. And what did he do? And gave gifts unto men, or gave gifts as men. Now that now that he ascended, what is it but that he also what descended? First, where in the lower parts of the earth, he that descended is the same that one that also that ascended up far. And listen, there's a lot to say, but I'm trying not to go there. We'll come back another time. And matter of fact, we'll put a note on these verses. One of these days, we we'll get a chance to come back. That ascended far above all what all heavens, that he might do what. Feel all things. Oh God. Glory. Levers. And he gave someone apostles and someone prophets 
some evangelists, some what? Pastors and teachers. And for what reason? Now, here's what I'm trying to show you. In order to bring people to where they need to come, it's got to be by virtue of the gifting that of the gifting of grace by virtue of the marriage of Christ. And it's, it's a gift from the grace of God by virtue of the marriage of Christ. What, God, what Christ has needed out to those giftings and they're to operate from that place. And I told you, even when I began to discover concerning the gift, even around pastoring, when I used to think I could, I could do that. But I thought I had certain qualities, certain things. I thought because I love people, thought I, because I was patient and I, I, I could really listen to people. Like didn't mind listening to people and could sit for long periods of time and allow people to talk and share their stories. And, and I thought as a result of it, I thought I had you know, a quality that I could pastor. I felt like that. But then I found out when I, once I got in that seat, I said, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't. You need to come get me. I can't do this. And I realized because it, you can't be bring people to a place by virtue of what you have as a talent, as, a, as just as an ability, as a skill set, apart from, remember, this is grace according to a, from the gift from Christ. And many people are out there doing things from a skill set, learned abilities, learned talents, and those kind of things. And that's why he says, I've hidden these things from the wise people. People that can feel figure things that are sharp. Um, people that are, listen, people that are sharp mentally. And, and, I mean, they, they're they cognitive. They got great cognitive skills. And people that, listen, savants. We got people that are really smart. But remember what he said in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter? I think, in 11, 11 chapter Matthew 25, says, I hid these things. I thank the Father that they have hidden these things from the wise People who can figure things out, learn it, got skills as professionals, and people who are so smart that they can figure things out. He said, I, these things are hidden from those people. So obviously, what God wants to nurture, raise people up, is not people with in, intelligence, genius, brilliance, can't develop you. They can't develop you from those skill sets. Because what it takes to bring you what God needs you to come. And what's happening is it was at uh, Longhorns on Sunday. And was, some of the young people that come, some of our family had come, and some of the, some of the young people was, was there at the table sitting having this dialogue. And some of them was telling them some of the information they got. They wanted to go into the store. And they didn't pay no attention to, you know, kind of what kind of store it is until they got inside. After they got inside, they realized that the woman was doing voodoo. And and, and, um, and they had crystals and different things. And, and, she, and she, you know, she said, I like crystals. You know, I kind of like those things that are really attractive, but I didn't know what kind of store it is. And once she got in, they started talking about the kind of the energy, the kind of energy that these crystals were going to attract and draw and the kind of energy it, it can be able to, to bless you to be able to do certain things and this. And then, 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 then the, um, the, the, the waist beads that, that they wear and, and, and what those things would do and the energy. And negative energy, these things are ward off, and the things that it can bring. And she was telling all this conversation, having this conversation, and the woman was telling her all these things. And so, sitting up here thinking that, you know, I didn't realize this was the kind of story it was, but I'm thinking, but they said that they listened, they listened to what the, what the lady was sharing and all the information. And, you know, sometimes you let people that's smart, got genius, got intelligence, if they are beyond you, they're beyond your pay grade in terms of their insight, insight what they got access to, they can. Who and all you revelation insight that they got about certain things. And so we was having this conversation. I remember one of the other ones talking to the mom and said, Well, listen, you know, we've been finding information from here. We're getting information over there, and we get information, you know, it's different things that we learn. And so we learn some of the same things you learn, but we know what you know, and we didn't we wouldn't we didn't get them from Bible study, we didn't get them from church. We got things that we got from out here, we know what you know. As a matter of fact, we know what we knew before you knew what you knew. And I'm sitting there, mm, interesting, interesting. Mm, you knew them things, right? Okay, but anyway, anyway, it was a good dialogue. And I really appreciate it. Matter of fact, we're going to try to get back and sit down some more. But here's my point. As we were talking about these things, they were talking about some of the insights, some of the information, and some of the things. That, it was talking about the Mayans. I don't know if some of you know who the Mayans are. And, and they were talking about, it was going back on some of the history and some of the things that happened in history and how, how history relates to this dark skin, obscure people. And we we're talking about these things. And I'm listening. I'm not saying it much at all. I'm just listening, just taking it all in. And I'm listening. But I said, you know, I said, let, let me, let me tell you, let me, hold, hold, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold just, just for a moment, just for a second. Here's what you can understand. The difference in collecting information out here, I want somebody to get this for me, if you don't mind. See, John, I think in 1 John 4 chapter, what the Bible was talking about, he said, beloved, believe not every spirit. I want you to get the, the, the verse for a moment, because here's what I want to say to you. 
I'm talking about as a church, as the body of Christ, because remember one thing we're told. First Ephesians, I'm sorry, first Timothy, fourth chapter, verse one. Now the spirit speaks expressed when in the latter time. Some are going to do what? what? Depart from the faith. He's going to depart from the faith and going to be given heed, right? That's going to be a strong seduction, strong deception that's going to be existing in our time. And I mean, listen, people with powerful information, it's not saying the information ain't strong. It ain't, listen, and it's good in the context that, it's, that it was spoken and shared. But here's the issue. And th these are things that we got to understand these days as a church and the body reading the body of Christ got to get into this book, got to get into God, start seeking his face, and God got to let us down in the midst of his counsel and let him reveal his heart, reveal his mind unto us in these days because of what God wants to do in these days. Remember what Jesus said? He said, according to this what? In Ephesians, this four chapters? Somebody got it? Where we at? What do you get? Who we at? What did I give you? First John, we got it? What is it? Y'all found it? Verse 13. Now, now, I want you to hold on. I gave you also, it was looking at Ephesians. I'll come back there. And I gave you John 15. I'm going to try to close these things out in just a moment. Try to bring them all in. I notice he says, beloved, do what? Now, he told him to believe, beloved, believe not every spirit, but what? Try them, test them. Whether they are what? Now, here's the issue about collecting. Sometimes people are collecting information and they don't test it. They don't challenge it. And that's you should not. I said the Bible teaches you to be a skeptic. Make folks convince you. Make them make you a believer. Because we tell people, you don't come in and believe. Listen, you got to teach people first. You teach people how to belong. Then you teach them to believe. Then after they believe, you can teach them how to behave. We got the order reversed. When people come to church, you try to teach people how to behave. All right? Before they believe. And before they belong. You first got to let people feel they got to send the Bible says, how are the world going to know you and his disciples? We're going to make them belong. How are they going to belong? Because they see that our love one to another. Baby, they won't end on that. They want to belong. If they get to belong, then they can get to believe. Because faith worketh by love. If we share love, exchange with each other, they can see how we got it going, how we take up each other, got each other's back. I mean, you may be wrong as two left shoes, but in front of them, I know how to handle you, and me and you going to straighten this out behind the wall. Behind the curtain, we're going to straighten this. But I'm not going to make you look ridiculous. I'm not going to put you down in front of sinners. The Bible says not to stand in the way of sinners. And I don't need to be doing anything that's going to block them from seeing the right way or the right path. I don't want to be acting crazy between me and you. I don't stand in the way of sinners. Am I right about it? And listen. I want to make sure that I'm not a barrier. I'm not a blockade. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not, I'm not in, in the wrong place, acting in a way that they're already in, and I'm not showing much difference between us, us how we interact than what the way they're walking in. Am I right about it? I don't want to be no barrier for them. That's what the Bible says. Woe to the hypocrite. Woe to you that confuses. I mean, confuse God's people. Anyway, let me get back. But anyway, that, that's what has to happen. So people get, get, it, all, get, get it all mixed up. You got to teach people to belong. Then they can believe. You get them to believe, then they can behave. How are people going to behave and they don't even believe? You know, you got to believe in God to be able to behave like God. But in order to behave like God, to believe like God, you got to belong. Am I right about it? The Bible says you don't have the spirit of Christ, you ain't none of his. You got to belong to believe, right? So we try to get people to belong first. In other words, we, we lay out a pattern on how this thing's supposed to work and how we interact, how we love one another to make it attractive for people. The Bible says, if you're going to win us all, you got to be wise. Now, what I was reading, was reading the text. Notice he says in 1 John 4, chapter, real quick, what he said, verse 13. What, what did he say there? Well, we were there. This is how we know that we dwell in him and he in us. Because he what? He's given us his spirit. Well, I'm going to have to find it because they, they won't go here at all. All right, where we at? What was reading from? All right, real quick, because I ain't got much time. Third version. Notice what he says. Hereby know we that we're what? we dwell in him and he in us because he what? He have given, un, given us of his spirit. And 14 verses, and we have what? Seen and do testify that the, what? the father what? Sent the son to be what? I'm, I'm looking for the verse I told you. Which one? 
Uh uh. I was looking for the verse. I, I thought you had found it. Well, he says, Beloved, I leave. I didn't share what verse are we in. Which verse? I'm sorry. We got to go at one what? I don't understand what you're saying. It's four and one. Let's back up. It got me way down here on this end. Let's go back up. This is one of this verse I was looking for. In verse one, that was good stuff. It was good stuff. The Bible's good, man. But verse one is, beloved, do what? Believe not. Now, here's where that came from. I know I broke in here, but I'm back up just for a moment. 22 verse of that third chapter says, and I, I don't have time I, to go through this like I need to, but I just want to show you this. And whosoever we ask, whatsoever, I'm sorry, we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do, do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should, one, believe on the name of the, of, of the son, of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. What? And do what? And love one another as he what? As he gave us commandment. And he that does what? Keepeth his commandments, dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know. What do we know? That he abideth in us. How? By the spirit which he have given unto us. So we have to make sure the spirit we got is one that was given to us from him. And notice what it says. So he says, John says, beloved, believe not every spirit, but do what? Try, test the spirits to see whether what? Whether they are of God. Because what? Many false prophets are gone out where? Into the world. Many what? False prophets have gone out into the world. He was warning because you got to be able to be. That's one reason the system had to change. Because when the Holy Spirit came and you had a, a whole new infrastructure, you know, when anytime something new comes, comes on the scene and people have not developed a history with it yet, it's, e it's easy at those times to, to, to duplicate it and to, and, and to mimic it and to falsify it and counterfeit it because people don't know much about it. And so that way I can come at you with something that looks like it and mimic it, and you get caught up in it the same way so many cults have done. So many folks out here saying that, you know what, Buddha, Muhammad, Hare Krishna, I mean, all these different, uh, what they were, people consider as faiths, that people consider out here, but really nothing but religions, and, and religions that people have entered into in their quest to find or discover God. And the God tells you, listen, he teaches you, beloved, don't believe. He teaches you to be skeptical. Tells you to test, try your spirit. And so in that, well, I was emphasizing because of the last days. That's why Peter stood up on a, up in the last days and stood up when, when the Bible said that sound came from heaven. And the Bible said, he said, this said Joel in the last days, said, God, I'm going to pour my spirit what, on all flesh. Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. And he, and he began to tell the effect and the impact when you got the spirit of God, what the spirit of God's going to do on people. Versus beloved, that's going to be people, false prophets. But notice. These prophets are going to be prophesying from a spirit. They're not just prophesying. And this is what I was trying to share. We was having a conversation yesterday at, at, at the, I'm sorry, Sunday at, 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 at the restaurant. And we were talking about it. And I said, well, listen, here's what you understand the difference between church and gathering information from people that seem to be smart or did a lot of research and do a lot of reading. And I thank God for my brothers and sisters that are, that are learned and people that have studied and people that does great, great research on, on information or philosophies or a, doc, a, a theological a perspective or a, a literature, all the things that people are, are on this quest or this mission for. But the issue, the reason you go to the house of God, listen, Paul said, I did not come unto you with enticing words of men's wisdom. But baby, you go to church because you want what people are talking about. To be demonstrated. See, the devil can ooh and ah you because in those days, the reason these things had to be clarified because you had Gnosticism going on. Acknowledge it. Ac <laughs> listen, Gnosticism, listen, you had so many people that were out here. There were so many that were out here that had great insights and great revelation. Because you got to think about it. Remember I told you one of the main influences on the culture right now is today is, is, is Aristotle, Socrates, Plato. That's what's ruling so many. That's what's ruling democracy because those are the ones who came. They're the ones who came up with democracy. They're the ones that's responsible for it. And our governments today are operating from those philosophies, from that philosophy. That's why as a church, as a body, we don't operate from democracy. That's not the government we're under. 
Jesus told you we can't operate from that place. And I, I wish I don't have time to go there, but somebody, I, I was going to go back. Uh, I get, got several passages out there. I'm not going to be able to get them. Not going to be able to get them. At least you got them. I gave you verses. I'm not going to be able to go there. But what I'm trying to tell you as a church, as a body, now the reason we can't shrink back because nobody else has the truth. They don't have the truth. We were designed. And listen, see, because truth is not just, it's not just learned it, learning. It's not just learned information. It's just not great philosophy. You know, it's not just being, like I said, it's not just being a sage. It's not just having the ability to research and read 2,500 words a minute. It's not because you're sharp. Uh, that, that's not where it comes from. And that's why I took you to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, to understand that Jesus, this is, this is how the church going to operate from. And this is the place. Remember what he told us? That this calling we got, it's a holy calling. And the issue about the holy calling, see, we have, we have so did such despite to holiness. It's ridiculous. And listen, I'm talking about me first. Because I came out from what we call a holiness church. I came out from being what they under call holiness. I thank God for the way that they things that they did because it kept me from a lot of stuff. I do appreciate it. But looking back, I realized we didn't really know much about holiness. We were in the embryo stages of it. Because, man, when I started looking at holiness and I started understanding, talking about God and talking about God and his, uh, his ultra, ultra, other worldliness, that the ram and the spirit of the mission, that God lives in, the reason that he's holy, because he's so distinct and so separate from everything else. Baby, you can't put on enough dresses. You can't put on enough clothes. Are you hearing me? You can't wrap up enough to get that. Maybe you can wrap up all you want to get, and that, that ain't going to give you that. It's a good thing that it will wound up being a place where you will be modest in your dress. You will dress a certain way. You won't be provocative. You'll not be going after this. But the holiness that transcends all those things is a nature. Man, it's an effervescence. It is something that only God can reveal to you. In other words, you got to qualify to function in it. It is a process to holiness. You don't just get this. In. You, you got to go through certain things we go through in order to make sure that God, that what you are walking in called holiness is something that God's doing through you. Are you hearing me? That's why, because once you start to, holiness start to impact you, and I, listen, I won't go there because I know I'm talking about so many different things, but I'm reminded of Isaiah. In the year the king Uzziah died, he saw the Lord, and the Bible said it was high and lifted up. Oh, my God. Baby, when you start to see holiness, it's something about what you can see about yourself. It first is internal. It first makes you realize who you are, what you got going on. Are you hearing me up in here? Then it starts to move on the outside. You start to see other people. You can't see other people if you can't see you. And that's the first impact and effect that it has on to you. It's how God, you start to see God in the dimension of glory that he's attired in and how he's attired. And I won't, man, I'm telling you, I think so far beyond my, 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 my pay grade. It's, it's, it's tremendous. But let's do this in closing and coming on down, bring it on in. Because I had to read as I was showing you that. But I want to show you, and we'll come back because I'm going to talk about this information, insight that people get, that people gain from the external, from the outside, that they don't get, that they, they're saying they can get outside of church. Well, you know, people go join cults and join all these things because they want to do some great things from these places. But see, I don't care. None of those places can give you what the house of God has to offer. And that is the builder. The builder. Jesus told you in Matthew 16, chapter who do men say the outer son of man? And everyone had a, had a decree, a declaration of who they thought he was. And apart from a revelation from Father God, not from your greatest guru, not from your favorite prognosticator, not from, listen, I'm telling you something, not from your clairvoyant, not from your psychic, not from your palm reader, your tea leaf reader. None, none of these people can give you the builder. You can't get the builder from that spirit. That spirit through prognostication, whether through psychic, tea leaves, reading your palm, none of that can give you the builder of this house. The Christ, when he says, upon this rock, when he asked Peter, well, who do men say that I am? Then he turned to him, well, who do you say? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said to him, thou art Peter. And flesh and blood did not reveal Flesh and blood didn't really do this on Peter, but my father was in heaven. My brother said, you know, we come here. We gather together to hear from the father. We gather together so that the, the one that has transcended death, because you can get information, insight from everywhere, anywhere you want to get it. 
But unless they are born from above, unless they've been born, unless the Lord has given birth to them through his son, through the Lord Jesus Christ, unless they believed on him, the information they got can't take you beyond the grave. It can't take you on the other side of death. What comes from the house of God, the reason you attend the church, the reason you try to seek God's face to be in a house, because you're looking for a man or a woman God that's in that's in lead, got their hand on the pulse of Papa's heart, on the pulse of his counsel, and are yielding and submitted to God and allowing the spirit of God to come through them because that anointing will transform your life. It'll transform your, your family's life, and it'll put you on the other side of death. Baby, you can learn all, learn all the philosophies of the world and get all the information you want. None of it won't put you on the other side of death. When you, you can die with that information, and you're still dead. So listen, think about it. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the brothers, all those that are Hebrews 11 chapter. The Bible said they died in faith. But the Bible said, but none, neither one of them had received the promise. Because the builder of the house had made it to the planet. The builder of the house, we didn't get a chance to talk about, I told you Moses was faithful in all his house, and where I was going with Jesus Christ was son over his house, until we begin to embrace him and understand him and what he has offered in the revelation. Because remember, the spirit of prophecy is his testimony. And if those information, insight, philosophies, and thought patterns, and learn patterns that you're gathering, that you're gathering, if they're not coming from his testimony, listen, guess what? You're not going, the far as you're going to be able to go is the grave. You go to the grave, and after that, you're standing for an unfavorable judgment. Are you hearing me? It's going to be an unfavorable judgment. And so what you and I, the reason that we're not afraid as a body, as a church, and what God's bringing us, like I said, we, I thought we were going to talk about this. We didn't get a chance to get to that. I won't even try to even go there tonight. That's some things, oh God, I thought it was going to be, oh, I thought it was going to be swinging from the chandeliers tonight. I really had some plans. But, that, but it's okay. It's all good. It's all good in God. Am I loving? Yes. Didn't get a chance to go swing. And, uh, but anyway, let's do this. And not closing. And, and, and the last verse, that I, want, that, uh, I didn't get a chance to go there. But I was saying, I, when he said in John 15, uh, 15, 15, and out of, uh, I gave you Hebrews, what, what what chapter was that? Hebrews, the third chapter. We didn't get a chance to go there, but I want you to show you a difference between a servant and a son. The Bible says, and he said in Galatians, the fourth chapter, he said, as long as the heir is a child. See, servanthood is inexperience. And what it, it, what it means when we talk about servanthood, you're going to be restricted and limited on the information, the insight that's available to you. As great a man as Moses was, the Bible said, remember we read out of 2 Corinthians 3rd chapter, you, that his administration was a ministration of death. It was, a, it was a glory, but it was dying. It was a dying glory, as great as Moses was. Why is that? Because it was not rooted and seated in the kingdom of God. It was under the law. The Bible said the law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And looks, and, and we talked about that at length, and we're, we're coming back. Because I still believe as a church, about a minute, I still don't quite understand what that ushered in and what the resurrection brought about it. Brought about it. Because in that, are we there? Listen, when you get it, tell me you got it, and I'll go. Because otherwise, I'm, 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 I'm shooting till I get it. Until we get it. We got it. What do we got? Now, what he said? Henceforth, what I did now, now this is John, what well, 15 chapter, 15 verse. Henceforth, I do what I call you not servants because the servant does what knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I've called you what I've called you friend because all things that I've heard of my father I've made known unto you. Servanthood won't allow you to have access like we need to have access. And what I'm saying is I'm talking about because we bear the sonship emblem. Where we're headed, that's where we're headed into. And I, like I said, I, I didn't finish it. I didn't finish those verses, but we'll get a chance. We'll get a chance to, maybe we'll get a chance to go there and you'll see why he gave these gifts. And these are the gifts of Christ. Because these things allow you to ascertain. Because remember, we are heirs of God, but we are joined heirs with Christ. Christ manifested and revealed what was available to us from God. Because when you use the term God, you talk about God, that is so vast, you wouldn't have a clue where to get started on what God has left unto us. That's when he says, in Romans the 8th chapter, that he's that God gave us his own son. Remember, he said, he, if he didn't spare his own son, 
And remember, he didn't spare his own son because he freely gave us all things through him. Apart from knowing him, you don't know what the free things are. The free things that we are, that belong to us that we can ascertain, the only way you can know them is through Christ. And so God set up men with giftings that will allow them to convey the free things that belong. That's why, that's why ministers have to watch when they're ministering in the name of the Lord. And they're to the minister from a pure stream, a pure anointing from God that allows the power of God to come through them to impact people's lives because of how Jesus said, listen, the Bible said he gave himself. He sacrificed Except the we fall on the ground down, he abides alone. But if he dies, Jesus died. That's why I said, Who died for us? Who can condemn us? Gee, he died. He's the one paid the price. He paid the price. He said it was finished. And we ain't got time to talk about it, but we'll come back. But he's going to say, In John, he said, What? That the servant don't know. We're elevating to because we're coming into our sonship. But how we get to know these things is through what he has deposited through the gift from the grace. Of the gift of Christ. Every single one of us, He's given us special things. And I'm telling you right now, those gifts, because a lot of us with talent, with skill, a lot of things we do, we learn to do, learn things we learn to do in church, but we're not operating from the place that He gave anointed gifts from the place that he brought them from. Do you know why you go through a lot of things you go through? You know why a minister has to has to go through things? You know why the Bible says you can't be a you can't be a minister uh, unless you can be touched with infirmity. You know why we need to be able to be touched with what people go through? Because those are that's Calvary. Those are those bleeding spots. Those bleeding spots allow you to be able to experience what people are going through, and it allows you to be touched people where they are. Because remember, Jesus came to the planet and he had to become a man. Why he became a man? So he could know what we went through. He can feel what we feel. So when he's releasing from him, when he releasing from him, when he says he's giving you grace from the and he's getting from the measure the gift of Christ, that grace is coming. It's coming from what he's already experienced and felt of us that he knows about us. And he's given gift from that place where he went through what we went through, but he overcame. He came through and didn't falter, didn't stumble, didn't fall short, didn't disobey. Everything he, the Bible said he became the perfect author. Wait, oh God. So I just make it up. He became the perfect author of salvation. Notice what he became in Hebrews, the fifth chapter is where he talks about it. He became the perfect author, not just an author. He just author salvation. We don't just have an author salvation that gonna make this. We just say we born again, baby. This thing was complete. It is complete. It was fulfilled. It was finished. Listen, when we go over to Ephesians the fourth chapter, the Bible says what we are headed to the end game. We're going. We're going to to realize that perfection. And the Bible says in the Colossians, we're going to come to a place to where we're going to know as we're known. But I'm stopping right here because there's so much more I could say, but I'm stopping. Listen, I thank God for all of you. You should have stopped before now. But listen, every single one of you that are listening to me right now, if you have not ever given the Lord an opportunity to come into your life, because I'm telling you right now, we got everything, everybody was created by God, but not everybody, they can't lay hold of him as a father. And you have to be born of him. The Bible says if you don't have his spirit, you're none of his. And I know a lot of people told us a lot of things about it, but if you don't have his spirit, you're none of his. Even though he died, God so loved the world, he, he gave his only God son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have. It's available. Jesus secured it for every, every man. But you have to. And that's what he told us in John 3. He said, this is the condemnation. The condemnation is that men loved darkness. Jesus didn't come to the world to condemn the world. But he came to the world through him. They might be saved. You have an opportunity tonight. But the condemnation is not that Jesus condemns the world. The condemnation is that men love darkness rather than light. I want to give you an opportunity right now. If you didn't never ask for him to come into your life, you never give an opportunity. I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. And while every head is bowed, every eyes closed, I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, forgive me, a sinner. Lord, tonight, I believe. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins my sin and I, because I believe tonight that Jesus died for my sins and I believe that God raised him from the dead that I might be justified that I might be saved I believe in the word of the living God and I'm asking you now to come into my heart feel me to overflowing that's my will I believe that Jesus is Lord and I believe he's Lord to the glory of God the Father 
And I'm asking you tonight, if you believe with all your heart that he died for your sins, yes, and you have to believe that, there's no, there's no way you can, be, been, some people say they've been saved all their life, and been saved all their life, and they've never really truly confessed Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, and not just confess him. See, that's the initial part, that you're willing to confess. But what you're confessing out of your mouth should be what you believe in your heart. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, that the mouth is supposed to speak. So whatever you're confessing, and a lot of times people will, will lay it in a confession, and people confess, and they'll say what the preacher told them to say. But they don't necessarily believe that with all their heart. If you don't believe with all your heart that Jesus died for your sins, and that God raised him from the dead, then you don't have faith. You haven't come into it, but that's what it takes. And if you've done that tonight, if you have really believed with all your heart that Jesus died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead, then we know that you have the opportunity to enter into the family of God. And so if you've done that tonight, I'm agreeing with you right now that the Spirit of God is going to work with your confession. And the power of God is going to give birth to you in the family of God. I believe tonight a miracle is taking place. Even now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the miracle of God, by the Spirit of God, is quicker than you making your life according to his word. And I believe that God is transforming you because of your confession, at, because of your believing. And so I decree, declare, believe with them. And for those of you that maybe you walked away and maybe you're in a bad place, maybe you once was walking with the Lord and you're not there now. But as the old adage go, the Lord is right there. And he's looking for you right now. And just know he said, I'm married to the backslider. God has never left. And we use the prodigal son, 15th chapter, book of Luke, just at the father, even though the son had asked, give me my inheritance, let me go. And he squandered all of it. But even though he squandered all, and, and the Bible says he spent in all type of riotous, lustful, vain, void living that he, he, he wound up entering into a profane living. And yet he wound up, with, the Bible says he wound up in the hog pen, eating with the swine. But the Bible said he came to himself. And in case you're out there right now, maybe you recognize today that you're not in a good place. Maybe you've compromised the faith. Maybe you've compromised and you didn't walk away. Maybe somebody hurt you, wounded you, bruised you. Whatever the case may be, the Lord is still right there. And I found a long time ago, sometimes you get tired of asking, well, you know, yesterday, last week, you know, God had to forgive me for this the other week and the other week. Man, I did that for a long time. And, but, I make, but one day I said out of my mouth, one day I ain't going to have to do it. I'm not going to have to call these people. To pray over me. I was doing it every single week. Every week I just couldn't shut my mouth. So I said, hmm, you're still on point. And listen, but I came to realize that I used to have these people praying over me every week. But one day I made up my mind, you know what? I ain't going to have to do this. One day I'm going to stand up on my own and I'm going to get past what I got going on right now. And guess what? That day came. It came, and I didn't have to call the bishop and his wife anymore to lay hands, to pray, to believe God with me because I'm blue and messed up. And finally got to a place I could stand on my feet, and I began to that place, I began to love God with all my heart. And I got discovered not just trying not to do something. I got to a place to where I didn't want to do something. The want to to do that was gone. Not me trying to stay away from not trying to do this. I don't want to do that now. On the inside, something happened on the inside. I didn't want to. I want him to please him. And when you get when you love him, when you love him, you got his best interest. Man, when you're loving people, you don't want to hurt him. You don't want to abuse him. You want him to be treated right. And so I got that came to that place. And so I just want to say to you that are out there, and then I remember times when I mess up and I just don't want to go, man, I don't want to talk to God no more about this stuff. Man, I know he's sick of talking to me about this stuff. He's tired of me. But then I remember a long time God told me, said, listen, where else you gonna go? Ain't nowhere else to go. But that's why mercy exists. God exists mercy for when you ain't, you know you ain't know where to believe. Because you can't have confidence when you're in sin. When you done broke covenant, you violated God's law, you can't have confidence. The confidence is knowing you're doing the will of God or you know the will of God. You can get confidence from that. But so when so when you don't have confidence, what do you need? You need his mercy. You need him to extend something to you. That's why he says come to the throne. Because at a throne, there's mercy for you to change and to help you come through what you need to come through. Well, listen. If the broadcast has been a blessing to you tonight, even though, like I said, we didn't get to go where we wanted to go. We didn't get to do what we wanted to do tonight. And, and listen, Pastor Garrett was trying to get on and it wasn't happening for him. And it wasn't happening, so he didn't make it. And I and I hated that we didn't because we had been talking earlier in the day. We just 
was really looking forward to talking to some things tonight. And I was really on my tiptoes, was hoping we could do it. But we didn't get there. I had some, I even had some notes tonight, but we didn't get there. And it's okay. Um, but prayerfully that something was spoken, said, and hopefully somewhere we touched something that was beneficial to you. And that if we did, I want to ask you to give. I want you to look on our screen. We have Givelify there. We have a, uh, our cash app address is to the church. And that's not my personal one. It's always been to the church. And that one there that that we do on this broadcast, guys, it's been to the church. And that is dollar sign C-O-G-G-W-C-I. And the other is dollar sign C-O-G-G-W-C-I-2. Okay? So it's on the screen. And also a C-O-G-G. Uh, that's 600 Tuscaloosa Avenue Southwest. That's Birmingham, Alabama, 3521. That's the address for those of you that may want to mail it or you want to come by, bring it by. And because God's doing something special. We're in a special season, a special time, and God's doing special things. God's touching people, and people are gaining deliverance, and, and he's doing some real special things. I'm telling you. I've seen it, and I know we're in a – this is, and I'll just tell you what he told. One of the things, he said this is a day of healing. So I'm urging people, don't give up on people that the doctors told you this going on, that going on. Don't quit. Don't give up on them. Man, get in there the more. Dig in there. Get in God's word. Find the passage. Re put on healing tapes. You got to put them on your head. headsets on at night. Let that thing, healing scriptures, play in your ears all night long while you sleep. Wake up. Building up. By building up yourself. Praying in the Holy Ghost to build up yourselves. But baby, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't listen. Decree, declare. I mean, declare the decrees. Speak over those people. Command. Talk to those bones. Talk to that body. When them pills, you having to take them pills, you see them sick of taking these pills. And you, and you, you want to quit? You want to give up? Listen, don't just do it because you're distressed. Do it because you believe. You stand in faith. Declare with that body. Let the body know that, listen, this is, listen, this here going to change right here. This here, These pills are just a formality. But listen, What's going to heal this body is what I'm declaring it. The news I'm reporting. Because who has believed our report? Isaiah 51 says. You believe the report. Declare it. Give the report to your body. Tell your body what the report has said about it. Tell him that Galatians says, Cursed is every man that hangs on a tree. Jesus Christ was made a curse for us. That the blessing of Abraham might come on. Listen, you got to begin to declare it. You got to release power. Power's coming out of your mouth. All right? Through your words. Listen, we thank God for you. And as always, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Now thanks be to God who always calls us to triumph in Christ Jesus. And you have got to be encouraged today.